Hey guys, I want to talk about a specific problem you might run into if you happen to be editing live recorded drums. In other words, there was a physical drummer present, not like a drum machine kind of a thing. Um, this is the drum part for uh, headed into the breakdown section of our new song that's coming out whenever called Selling Drugs for Dr. Kerosene. And it's a little 16th note uh, double kick section. And specifically, the problem that we're talking about is flamming between two different instruments that should be hitting at the exact same time. So right now, my grid is showing 16th notes, and you can notice uh, when he really started the double kick part, this part is pretty pretty out of time. I'm actually a little nervous about how this is going to sound edited. Uh, it might take some finagling to get that part fixed. Um, but specifically, this video is about this problem. So the issue here is that, especially if I zoom in, right now I'm looking at eighth notes, um, zoom in so you can see sixteenths, uh, the snare is played ahead of the uh, the kick, which is actually kind of ideal. So normally when you edit drums, you want to edit all of your tracks at the exact same time. So if I click on them, all of them highlight in the same time, I have a, a drum, group, drum group created, and that way I can just click and then slice and do all my edits with one keystroke, which is the way that you want to do it. The... Uh, <clears throat> The problem here, here is that I want them to sound like they hit at the same time, and that's going to cause some sort of a flaming in the overhead and the room mics, because those are the ones that will always be, be playing. My solution to that is just to kind of carve a little bit of the low end out of the room mic, which is not ideal, but, you know, sometimes you got to make a compromise, and we're not, you know, periphery, uh, we're animals as leaders, or somebody spending six months or a year in a studio getting exactly the take that they wanted so we're growing and just trying to do our best to survive as a group so at any rate that's why the take isn't perfect um also you know we we did this drum tracking in just two two sessions so it took about maybe about five six hours um you know so again a pragmatic decision on our part and, and that, that that's my excuse for why the part isn't perfectly played to begin with <laughs> um haters leave comments i don't care <clears throat> So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the grid so that I can make free edits and free cuts. And we're just going to focus really on this part with the flaming. I'm not going to worry about the thing uh, earlier. Um, hopefully, fingers crossed, that'll, that'll come out okay. So what I'm going to do is turn on the scissors. And I'm just going to go ahead and make the edits. So when it's the snare that should have been on the grid and the kick is off, I just let the snare be the guide. So I'm going to cut on the snare. And then these edits are just, uh, just kicks. So I'm just going to cut on top of the kick and the kick then i'm going to let the snare be the guide and then i'm going to let the little little toms over here so i'm going to let the toms be the guide and this is the section that we're going to work on so now i've made my edits you can pretty clearly see that everything is ahead of the grid a uh, fairly decent amount um, and you know these kickets are super off right now and they're not going to line up so i'm just going to grab these um, go to the quantize box. Right now I have triplets turned on or six tuplets. Just going to turn that off so that we have sixteenths. It's going to slam that to the grid. So now everything is right on top of the grid. We've got our snare hit where we want it. The other kick hits are exactly where we want it. Um, but these these are not. So I'm going to turn off my drum group. That way I can grab the kicks individually. And I'm going to move them right on top of the beginning of those transients. Then I'm going to grab each one of those. Sorry, I'm going to put the mic down. Then bring up the quantize box and then quantize just those kick hits. Now that's going to cause some issues in the overhead, but like I said, it's not going to be that noticeable because this snare hit or the tom hits are going to be so loud, it's going to kind of overpower it. If the kick is in front of it, that's where it's going to be noticeable, and there's not really anything you can do about it. You're just sort of stuck. Um, then I'm going to turn my group back on um, and basically just go through and drag over those gaps. Remember to that you have to do these drags, otherwise you'll end up cutting off the beginning of the transients, and the edit will sound unnatural, and you don't want that, obviously. I'm going to turn off my group. Just drag that one on its own. Then you just grab all of them. Actually, I'm just going to grab those. And I'm going to create crossfades. I use 7 milliseconds. You can experiment, do whatever you want. And let's take a listen, see if it sounds any good. Mm -hmm. 
So I heard a little crackle going into the edit. Um, I think I'll just have to adjust that and tweak it with uh, with this other edit. I think it'll sound better because this one's going to move over and this one's going to move over. So at any rate, that's the way to solve that problem. Um, it's not ideal. You know, I, you know, ideally you would want a better take where everything did line up. But like I said, if you're you know, especially if you're you're a, a band that's growing or a band that doesn't have, you know, hours and hours and hours to spend in the studio. Um, you know, this is one way of going about kind of tightening up your performance. Um, also, I'm going to be sample replacing all the kicks, snares, and toms with uh, with Slate Digital software. I'm also going to still be mixing in our actual recorded versions, kind of combining and blending the two to get the tone that I'm looking for. Um, and, uh, you know, so I, I don't think, you know, especially with the sample replacements, it's not going to be as noticeable in the overheads, uh, or in your, in your room mic, because those samples are going to be nice and loud and punchy and big sounding. And so that's kind of the way of fixing that problem. Um, like I said, ideally you don't want the problem to even be there, but that's one compromise and one way of going about it. Um, thank you for watching. Good luck with all the projects you guys happen to be working on. Um, take it easy.